C'est le printemps qui cause de ça, comme dans la chanson, hein Merci. <rire> Before we begin our studies, I have some sad news to tell you. Your fellow classmate Hector is no longer with us. And do you know why? The fool, the idiot, he got himself pinched. They nabbed him in the subway for trying to relieve a man of his wallet. As ungracefully, may I say, as a hippopotamus. I warned him, I told him, Hector, I said. You haven't practiced enough, your fingers are too stiff. The sap will be lucky if he gets off for three months in the clean. How many times do I have to remind you that I will not tolerate slang in my classroom? Not to mention a prison either. Louis, draw the curtains, lock the door. This unfortunate incident proves that you're not paying the proper attention to your studies. Model number two, go on, you two, hurry. We start today with the inside coat pocket, the one that cost poor Hector his freedom. Thank you. All right, come on. All right, Henri, you try it. Me? Yes, you, of course. Come on, hurry. He isn't going to open his coat for you. The right hand, the right hand. The right hand brushes lightly. Very flat. Come on, go to it. Well, Hector is going to have company. Look at these fingers. When you came here, they were long and graceful. Now they're like sausages. <laughs> the is not eating too well. Silence. Be seated. Marinette, you come here. Terity of the fingers, the graceful touch. If you were all as serious as Marinette, if you applied yourselves and really worked hard. Who is it? Professor, can you spare a moment? Someone downstairs. Continue. Monsieur? Oh, I've come in answer to the ad you run in the paper. Job. A jobs with a brilliant future for hardworking, serious young people, huh? That's it. I wish I could have a chance at it. 
But I have no money for fees. I take care of expenses while you're learning. In exceptional cases, my students are even housed and fed. Oh, it sounds good. <laughs> What's your trade? Unemployed, but I used to be a mechanic. Identification papers? Oh, I need papers? Oh, huh. what do you think? Of course. Uh, silly. But I must have left it at home. Home? Where is your home? Well, it's, uh, you know... You have no home. I'm afraid you're right. No home? No papers? I'm sorry. But under the circumstances? Please, sir, won't you change your mind? It's no use. No home, no papers. Impossible. Good day. But I will do anything. I will... Put... afraid you'd gone. My man, I have reconsidered. Oh. Oh, you have? Yes, by the way, what's your name? Yves Cadoubert. Yves Cadoubert. <laughs> well, my dear Yves Cadoubert, you may call me Professor. And now, my dear Yves, but first give me back my 50 francs. Oh, oh what 50 francs? Listen, a short while ago, there was a 50 franc note here on this desk, and now it's in your pocket. But I swear I... Good, good, very good. And the expression, the indignation is perfect. You have to fool anybody, but not me, nor the police. Do you know what they do with a little nobody like you, without identification papers? If a respectable gentleman like me reported that you'd stolen his 50 francs? Professor, don't tell me, please. It's the first time I ever stole anything. Excellent, simply excellent. You certainly show possibilities. But no more nonsense. Now, give me back my 50 francs. Come on, come on. <laughs> Enough. Come on. It's only by constant practice. That members of our profession can develop their sense of touch to the skill needed to make a decent livelihood. Nimble fingers are the first essential. Without them, remember Hector. All right, let's get to work on today's lesson. Hurry, right, hurry, take your places. Come on. That's right. He's eating too much. He's getting heavy. Oh, Mimi, you look so beautiful. You're oh, wonderful. You look adorable this morning. Come on, come on. Take place. Get out of there. Get out of there. Stay moving. Come on. Splendid. Sit down, won't you? Uh, jobs of the future, please. Yes, yes, I know. I, I wrote it. You're of age. Oh, do I have to be? Of course, you have to be 21. Oh, well, I'm 21. <clears throat> Naturally, you have identification papers. I didn't know I had to have... Of course. Um, Where do you live? Well, I... Uh, I did... Uh, too bad. Too bad. I'm afraid I shall have to... Uh... Excuse me. I'll be back in a moment. 
But uh, don't be too hopeful. No home, no papers. I think we shall get along famously. Really? You think so, Mathieu? Yes. And what's your name? Arlette. Arlette Lefond. Arlette Lefond. Well, my dear Arlette, I... Uh, first of all, give me back my 50 francs. 50 francs? Yes, my 50 francs. What are you hiding? I'm sorry, monsieur, but I was so hungry and... I... But you will give me the job, won't you, please? I thought I could, but you've disappointed me. But I'm a good worker. Please give me the job. I was so hungry and... I... Yes, I'm, I, I'm just as sorry as you are not to be able to use you. You're frank and honest. I like that, but it's not enough. Good day, monsieur. Oh. Wait a minute. What's this? Oh, that, that's just a handkerchief. Yes, a handkerchief. Right out of a reform school. I know the kind very well. When did you escape? So, yeah, you're number 497, eh? Yes, monsieur. I lied to you. I'm only 18. When my parents died, I went to live with my aunt, and she was mean to me. She beat me. And then she got married, and then there were two to beat me. That's why I ran away. They had me put in that reform school, and it was just like a prison. That's why I ran away from there, too. Oh, please, monsieur, don't turn me in. I'm not a bad you girl. You couldn't be with those eyes and that expression. Let me see your hands. <laughs> with these hands and what I can teach you, there's no limit to your possibilities. Come along. Now that you've been caught in the act, what would you do? Come on, what would you do? Put it away. <laughs> All right, my dear. What would you do? Uh, ask forgiveness and swear never to do it again. No, no. Play innocent. Deny everything. Play innocent. And deny everything. That's right, that's right. Of course, you must deny everything. And you must deny it not only fervently, but convincingly. But don't rely on your voice alone. Complete innocence must be written all over your face. And to achieve this effectively, we'll once more run through those exercises, which are somewhat similar to those used by professional actors. We'll start with you. Me, sir, you're mistaken, sir. It's not me. I swear it on the head of my father. Zero. <laughs> well, I don't even try you. But uh, with a little uh, physical emotion, please. Yes, sir. Me, sir, you're mistaken, sir. It's not me, it's not me. I swear it, I swear it, I swear it on the head of my father. I didn't do it. <laughs> I don't blame you for laughing. I ask you to emote in your fellow like a sick calf. <laughs> Eve, you try. With a little less emotion. Me, sir? You're mistaken, sir. It's not me. I swear it on, on, on the head of my father. You swear it on the head of your father, just as if you were openly confessing your guilt. But it gives me the jitters to swear that. Oh, why? Because my old man is still alive. <laughs> <laughs> he's in a poor house, but he's still alive. So the old man's still alive. That's too bad. What do you want me to do about it? Wait? <laughs> I'll let my dear. You try it. Me, sir? Oh, you're mistaken, sir. I didn't do it. I swear on the head of my father. That's it, that's it. That's convincing. Come around here, my dear. That's right. Show them. Here we are. That's right. Now, innocence, astonishment, anger, fear, pleading. Bravo, Alec. Bravo. Bravo. That's your homework for tonight. You will each practice that exercise diligently in front of a mirror until you can do it as Alec does. Dinner in a short while. Lights out as usual at 9 o'clock. Task dismissed. Me, sir? You are mistaken, sir. It's not me. It's not me. I... I swear... Oh, it's no good. Once more. 
Oh. Me, sir? You're mistaken, sir. It's not me. It's not me. I swear it on the head of my father. I'm innocent! I'm innocent! Oh, oh, oh shut up. How can we get a little sleep around here? Ah, shut up, you sir. Who is there? Me. Oh. Am I keeping you awake, too? No. <laughs> Isn't that? That's good. It's no use. When I lie, everybody knows it. Maybe I ought to go into politics where it doesn't matter. Tell me, how do you do it? I make believe, like an actress in a play. But the thought of stealing, I'll never be able to do it. Well, why are you here in this place for? And where would you go? Back to the reform school? You can't get a job without identification paper. You know that. Say, have you ever thought of marriage? Why, naturally, uh... That's it. Marriage. A white marriage. What? A white marriage. Just a ceremony. You never see the groom again. Perfect marriage. Now listen. Once you are married, your husband is responsible for you. They can't put you back in the reform school. You beat the rap. Oh. Well, who would I marry? That's something I wouldn't know. You see? I'd be glad to help you, but I haven't got any papers either. But I know a guy who arranges marriages like that. Well, come on, what are we waiting? Yeah, not so fast. Got money. How much? Three thousand francs. Three thousand? Well, where would I get money like that? That's what you're here for. To learn how. To steal. Steal to stay honest. For that, I'll do it. Seemed an important reason for stealing his property. 
After all, he may have just as important a reason for keeping his power. Yes, Your Honor. I agree. And there is no excuse for my client's indiscretion, regardless of his explanation of his desperate circumstances. But I assure you that now he realizes the seriousness of his offense. And if leniency is shown him by the court, he will not make another mistake. The stolen article has been returned to the owner, and the prisoner has not profited by his error. And if your honor will be merciful, the prisoner will not forget his duty to society again. I, I swear, I, I'll never steal again. It was the very first time, your honor. I, I promise it won't happen again. I hope you are right. For the next three months, I am going to make sure that you do not do any more stealing. Where you are going, there will be little temptation to steal. But your honor... Take the prisoner away. But, but, but your honor, please. Please, Your Honor, please. Next please. case. But, Bishop, if we go now, we'll miss the Mickey Mouse. Don't you like the Mickey Mouse? Monsieur, what good will it do to turn me into the police? if you want to, but I won't. I'll, I'll do something desperate. I'll, I'll complain to the man with a stick pin. What I want to know is how long are you going to keep me here? Well, say something! Oh, it isn't your conversation bores me. <laughs> It's just that I'm beginning to lose my patience. You. I was with, uh, with the Secretary of the Interior, Your Excellency, when I received your message. Mm -hmm. Likely story. <coughs> but really, Dvorak, not that I mind. You must think of your family, particularly of your niece. My niece? But I have no niece. Of course you have. Teresa, my sister, is a young woman of irreproachable character, I assure you. Well, I don't get excited, Vorak. Perhaps I should have broken it to you more gently. What, Teresa? Oh, no, no. Besides, she's homely. But your niece isn't. Look. Now, 
Now let's go over it once again and this time get it right. I come from Geneva. I went to... I attended a girls' boarding house. After boarding school. Boarding school. I go back to Geneva tomorrow. This is my first trip to Paris. This is my first ball. And this is the first time my feet hurt, too. And you are? I'm worn out. Answer, who are you? I am Mademoiselle Arlette de Chevalier. De Chevalier. De Chevalier, pardonnez-moi. Arlette de Chevalier. You are my uncle, and I am your niece. Baron, I mean uncle. Who am I going to tell all these lies to? His Excellency hasn't confided in me, remember. You are not to utter one word that I haven't taught you. Don't forget, you're supposed to be a lady. <laughs> Fine too, sir. Uh, I'm very well indeed, thank you. Oh, I'm glad to hear it, sir. Uh, oh, this is Mademoiselle de Chevalier. Uh, my niece. Oh, delighted. Then why haven't I met this young lady before? Well, this is my first trip to Paris, and this is my first fall, and I'm going back to Geneva tomorrow. My oh. dear, a schoolgirl's career is hardly a subject of interest to his excellency. Oh, ah, but I am most interested. We'll talk about this later on in the evening. Hmm? Thank you, Your Excellency. With your permission, sir. your dreams. I uh, want you to dance with someone. Oh? Who? That man over there. The one dancing with the lady in black. Oh, him? Some point. Oh, he looks very nice. He's beautiful. Very. Oh, when do I dance with him? I have to introduce you first. Oh. Do I ask him right away? He will ask you. But suppose he doesn't. He will. While you're dancing with him, you will discreetly relieve him of his watch. What a stealing! It's a secret mission. I won't do it. I must have that watch. Well, then swipe it yourself. I've only stolen once and I'm not going to steal again. Then you'll go to jail for stealing my stick then. What? You mean if I don't steal the second time, I go to jail for stealing the first time? Exactly. And you, an ambassador. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. Mademoiselle? Yes, my dear, Mademoiselle Arrête de Chevillier, this is my wife. Mademoiselle? 
uh, Baron Borak, niece. Monsieur Pierre Desroches, young diplomat with a very promising future. How do you do, Mademoiselle? Monsieur Desroches is a smoother dancer as he is a diplomat. Don't believe a word of it, Mademoiselle. This is her first ball. You are to be her first partner. My dear, shall we dance? His Excellency is placing a great responsibility upon me. I am afraid I'm unworthy of it. A young girl's first ball is a very important event. She remembers it all her life. So, I shall be part of your memory. And believe me, I'm very proud and flattered. I didn't know Borak had such a charming niece. Well, he didn't know it himself. What? I mean that he's so absent-minded that uh, he never thought to mention her. of time yet. <clears throat> oh, but if I let you go to your uncle, will you come back quickly? Oh, I promise. I'll be waiting for you in the buffet. Well, I finished that caviar sandwich already? Yes, monsieur. Mm, funny. My dear Pierre, it's you. What luck. For whom? For both of us. I have the supreme pleasure of seeing you. You have the supreme pleasure of seeing me. But your pleasure is even more supreme than mine because you are about to have the honor of doing me a little favor. Ah. Wait us some 28, please. Champagne? Aren't you eating? Oh, I forgot. You've dined, haven't you? Haven't you? Because I told you I hadn't even lunched. I wouldn't believe you. And I think I know what favor you are going to ask me. My dear Pierre, you're as good as gold. I saw it. It's not worth a thing. You'll not even get 50 francs for it. Believe me, I know. Will you kindly do as I told you? But I can get you much better. No. But I, it's got diamonds. No. Don't you worry about what it's worth. That's the one I want. Now do as I tell you. All right. All right. But you've got mighty funny taste. Well, you look happy. I am. Anything special? Very special. I couldn't find my uncle, so I hurried back. Very special. I see what you mean. Oh. Mademoiselle Le Chevalier, let me introduce to you my worthless friend, Roland Latour. Enchanted to meet you, mademoiselle. You should. Then. Shall we dance? Here. Yeah, I'll wait right here. I'm counting on you. Hmm. What's this?
steal that. She got his watch. I give the most irresistible desire to leave. I stop hearing the music, I stop listening to the conversation. All I seem to hear is the ticking of my watch telling me it's time to go home. And tonight? Tonight I don't even hear my watch. Oh, there's my uncle now. But what? Pardon me. Very great favor. Is it Dad himself? Well, you wouldn't understand. Naturally, it concerns a grave matter. Well, now, Your Excellency, we're even. Not quite. I still need your services. Another watch? No. It's just a question of returning this one to its owner. What will I tell him? That I picked it up off the floor? Not at all. You're going to put it back in his pocket as discreetly as you took it out. What? Put it back in his pocket. Put it back in his pocket? That should be easy, even for a beginner. But they never taught us that. I wasn't gone very long this time, was I? Even longer than before. I was getting older by the minute. I kept wanting to look at my watch. I must have been away at least. That's funny, my watch is gone. Are you sure you had it? Well, I think so. Yes. Don't you remember? I showed it to you when it was five past ten. Well, that's right. Well, uh, maybe it's in another pocket? Oh, no. Oh, no, I never... That's strange. I never put it in that pocket. Mm. Well, my dear? Where have you been all evening? You keep appearing and disappearing like a magician's rabbit. Why, well, you know what an embassy ball is for an ambassador. I know what a ball it is for an ambassador's wife, utterly neglected. Well, I'm sorry, but now that I'm free of a great burden, I'm completely at your disposal. Will you dance? I wish to speak to you. Vorak, you are not going to take your niece away. Uh, just for a few minutes. I'll be back. Mademoiselle, your mission is fulfilled. His Excellency has asked me to tell you how completely satisfied he is with your work and to give you this. Naturally, you will keep all the clothes, everything. And now, Mademoiselle, good night. You mean you're kicking me out? Oh, not at all. Only that your presence here is no longer desirable. Oh, I almost forgot. His Excellency asked me to remind you that he's counting on your discussion, which will ensure you his own. But, Baron, can't I go back for just a moment? Uh, no, that is impossible. But I'd like to... I'll tell Monsieur de Roche that my niece wasn't feeling well and that she has asked me to say good night for her.
Mademoiselle, you're forgetting something. You're forgetting something else, Mademoiselle. Me? Oh, I'm sorry, but my uncle uh, said it was time for me to go home and that uh, he'd make my excuses. But it's so early. I know, but, well, he thought my first ball and I shouldn't stay too late, you Forgive know? me, but your uncle is a prude. Well, Come on, no, but I must go to him. All I... right, all right, then I'll take you home. But I, I can't. Why? You don't think I, I'd let you go home alone, do you? But I'll be all right. I mean... you, you certainly will be, because I'm going with you. Asking for arms, old man. After all, I keep a record of what I owe you. All right, then. This to the account. Oh, but uh, that's all I have on me. Well, well thanks. Oh, I'll be at your house in the morning. I simply must tell my troubles to somebody. Oh, no, no, no not, not to me again. Here, if you don't help me, I shall be thrown out the street. Not another suit. Very well, then. I shall sleep in a park bench. But don't let that bother you. Did you call, my friend? Yes. Yeah. I can't bear to think of you sleeping on a park bench. They are not wide enough. Look, I'm leaving tomorrow night for a week or so. Idiot. Diplomatic mission. You may use my house until I come back. You are a pal. Why are you in such a hurry? We are not at your uncle's yet. Oh. Well, that's right. <laughs> I always get mixed up. Well, um, why did you stop here? Because I don't want to be interrupted again by your uncle coming back. I have something to say to you. Have you? Good evening, sir. Good evening, my friend. Lovely night. Never saw a lovelier one. Good night. Good night, sir. You know him? Oh, yes. 
And he let you swipe flowers out of that garden? Naturally. It's my garden. Oh. That's your house. Beautiful. You, you... You live there alone? Yes, all alone. That is, with Flora. Flora? Hmm? Yes, that's her name, Flora. She's very cute. And smart, too. One of the smartest dogs you ever saw. Oh, a dog. What did you think? Oh, nothing. Well, don't think it. And tell me, how did you learn to whistle like that? Oh, it's very simple. You just you just put your tongue against your lower teeth, eh? like that. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And then you put your two fingers, see, on your tongue, like that. Mm -hmm. And you blow, okay? You just go... Amazing. You put your two fingers like... Yeah, put your tongue against your lower teeth. And then it sounds like that. And then you blow. And then you blow. Uh, go again. Uh, the hardest. <laughs> <laughs> That's well. <laughs> Thank you very much, and, and good night. Not yet. When am I going to see you again? Oh, uh, I don't know. I, I'm going back to Geneva tomorrow. To Geneva? Yes, I, I go to school there. I can believe it. That's marvelous. I'm leaving for Geneva tomorrow, too. We can travel together. You are taking the night express, of course. Well, uh... The six no. o'clock, then? That one is no good. It's always late. Well, that's the one I'm taking. It doesn't matter. I'll take it. It should be a delightful trip. So, I'll meet you at the station. Oh. You... You... You wouldn't care to let me make you cry again. Where are you coming from at this hour? You know the rules, in by midnight. I saw a gentleman, a very elegant gentleman, and I followed him. He, oh, he had a magnificent pearl stick pin. Oh, that's different. Pearl stick pin, eh? Uh -huh. I followed him and followed him until he got on a bus, and then I... Never mind the details. Where's the pin? I didn't get it. Why not? I got scared. You're lying. Oh, no. I swear it on the head of my father. <laughs> oh, no, no. Not to me. No, not to me. Remember, young lady, I'm not running a charitable institution here. Go on, get to bed. Ah, good morning, Je... Mm, 
I hope nothing went wrong at the embassy ball. Well, hope again. You mean you didn't have much uh, success? Nothing. Gentlemen, it cost me 10,000 francs to get you into that ball. I'm not in the habit of wasting 10,000 francs. I work too hard for my money. I demand an explanation. We demand one, too. And there must have been a king's ransom in jewels at that ball last night, and you say that you didn't get anything. Don't tell me. We don't operate unless we have an exclusive. We don't engage in a free-for-all where somebody slips up and we might get nabbed. I tell you, there was nobody. What are you looking at? And you said you didn't know who was there. Then would you please explain how one of your pupils could get into the embassy ball unless you had made the arrangement? Yes, that's the one. The one in the check blouse. The girl. Ah. Bring the model number seven. Today, we are going to take up some of the problems in the social world. Now, let my dear, come here. The most opportune moment to achieve our purpose is while dancing. Come on, pretend you're dancing. me to introduce Monsieur Pierre de Roche, attaché at the embassy. I might have known it. A face as honest as yours could only be dishonest, could only lie. I'm not the media here. Get out of here, you thief. Get out, you foul crosser. Get out. Give a chance to explain. If you don't want to be kicked out too, I advise you to shut up. I know what I want you stole. But I didn't steal it. My man saw you. But didn't they see me put it back? No, they didn't. So you put it back, eh? My word of honor. Your word. You've just said that you didn't steal it. How could you put it back if you didn't steal it? Look, but I put it back. A liar. Ingrate. Without me, you wouldn't know how to steal. Now that you do, you want to keep it all. Get out of here, you crook. Get out and stay out. That's what I will do. I'd rather be back in reform school and here at your filthy old school. We call you for honest jobs and you, you make things out of us. They'll catch up with you one of these days. And you'll see, you'll see. And I hope it's true. I was beginning to get worried. How are you? Where is your father? I haven't any. Where is your baggage? I haven't any. Oh. You mean you intend to travel without baggage? No, no, I'm I'm not leaving. I just came down to say goodbye and, and to explain. Goodbye? You are joking, of course. No, no, I'm not. Honest, I'm but not. That's leaving. absurd when only last night. I know a lot of things have happened since last night. Then when I... are you leaving? I'm not leaving at all. At all? No. <laughs> You see, Flora is disappointed too. Then may I see you when I get back? No, I'm sorry. You don't want to see me again? Yes, yes, I do very much, but... Uh, but I, I won't be able to see you for a, a long, long time. A long, long time? Are they going to lock you up? Yes, they are. Who, your uncle? My uncle? What are you trying to say? 
I'm trying to tell you that I, uh, that I ran away from the reform school. Reform school? You don't expect me to believe that. Yes, I do. Did the ambassador tell you why he wanted my watch? No, he just said it was very important that I get it for him. You did a terrible thing. thing. I'm sorry, I... I'm a spawn. Well, wait, you're kind of believing. Wait for me. Wait for me right there. So your picture in the back, don't you see? What do you mean I shouldn't worry? Of course I do, but this is no time. What? Tell you something nice? When is leaving? What? They found nothing in the compartment? That's not possible. My papers were there, my briefcase, my baggage. Did they jump out of the window? And my dog, Flora. If anything happened to Flora, I... It's your job to find them, that's all. Right down. I had to ride all the way to the next station, and it was a long walk back. You shouldn't have done that. Well, I didn't want you to lose your dog and your luggage on my account. Sorry, I can't open the door. My man thought I had gone, and he locked up everything. I had to climb through a window to get in myself. Get your umbrella. Thanks. Here's your Flora. Well, no, girl, what an adventure, huh? Well, good night. Where are you going? Back to the reform school. At this time of night? Well, that's all right. You can always get in. Wait a minute. What's the matter? Are you homesick for the reform school? Well, that's not it. It'll have to be done sooner or later. What? will they do to you? First, they'll make me account for every minute I've been away. Inquisitive, hmm? And what are you going to tell them? The truth. The truth. You aren't going to tell them about the, the embassy ball. I'll have to. Well, suppose we talk this order tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning? They won't let me have any visitors. No, I mean, you can stay here tonight. Come on, you out there. Here alone with you? I assure you, I know how to behave with a young lady. So I've noticed. Oh. What's the matter? That stupid servant didn't make up the bed. Yes. Do you uh, mind if I wear this? I certainly do. Put it back at once. It belongs to my sister. If I could suggest something... Um... You have suggested enough. Well, I was only going to suggest that you sleep in the other room and I could sleep here. I've slept without sheets before. Oh, so have I. Here, let me help you make the bed. No, I don't need your help, and I don't want your advice. You were very kind, and I am duly grateful. Danke schön, merci beaucoup, good night. Get the idea? Good night. Buena sera, bonne nuit. Well, what now? Uh, I didn't want to leave the wrong impression with you, so I'd like to finish telling what you. What about now? Uh, I'm sleepy. Look, I only stole once. No, twice. No, once. Well, anyway, I gave them both back. 
So you gave it back, so you only stole once. I'll keep that in mind. And now, good night. Good night. You know why I stole? No. And frankly, because I don't I wanted to get married. You stole because you wanted to get married? Yes, I wanted to buy a husband. To buy what? You know, like a marriage in name only. Can you guess why? No. And I'm not going to guess. You'll tell me anyway. Because if I was married, I wouldn't have to go back to the reform school. What? Yes, that's the law. Once you're married, you're free. Eve's told me so. And who is this Eve who knows so much about the law? Oh, he's my friend. My only friend. He could have gotten me a husband, only I'd have to pay for him. That's why I stole him. Once I was married, I, I could start a new life. A new life. Now do you see? Not very clearly. Well, let me explain it to you. It's oh, no, not well, now. To... It's really too late. You can finish telling me about your life tomorrow morning. And now, to bed. And sweet dreams. Well, if it isn't Monsieur Oren. Hello there, Jean. How do you do, sir? Hello. You still here? No. I mean, uh, yes. For the love of... I completely forgot I offered you my house. What? Don't you say I can't stay here? Why, I checked out of my hotel. It'll be a calamity. Well, you see, it's like this. I... That is... Uh... I will manage somehow. Well, I, I have to... Well, go ahead. Yeah, well, the fact is I... Uh... <laughs> Oh, I get it. Mm -hmm. Here. <laughs> and uh, bring me the chain. The snowman. Mm -hmm. My affairs in a terrible state. I want to win it once and for all. It might save us both a lot of bother. Would you like my revolver? Oh, not at all, no. I wouldn't end it that way. Uh, a man like me doesn't give up the ship. He, he fights courageously. And how much do you need to fight courageously? Mm, about uh, 10,000 francs. Yes, with 10,000, I can settle everything. I could go to the colonies and start a new life. A new life? You too. What do you mean, me too? Tell me. Are you quite sure that with 10,000 francs you could... Oh, have... positively. Of course, with 15,000, I could start a really new life. First class. I think I have a way for you to earn the 10,000. 15,000? 10. Look, my old friend, a really first class new life. Do you remember the girl I was dancing with at the embassy ball? Four X -Ease. Yes, that's the one. Only she's not Borat's niece. Oh, she's not his niece, huh? She's going to get married. Really? To you? No, to you. To me? Yes, to you. And believe me, you'll never find a nicer or more charming girl. Well, good morning. Good morning. Do you take coffee in the morning? Yes. No, that is no. I mean, not this morning. What you said last night, I gather everything would be fine if only you were married. Yes. Everything. I've given it a lot of thought. But all you did me a favor and I'm returning it. Oh, you don't have to. Naturally, my friend Roland would only marry you under certain conditions. Roland? Yes. Yes, Roland. Well, the marriage would be perfectly legal. Although, it wouldn't tie either of you down. Immediately after the ceremony, you would each be free to go your own way. I see. You don't seem very enthusiastic. Wasn't this what you wanted? Don't you like the idea? Yes, of course. Well, then... What's the matter with you all of a sudden? Nothing. Nothing at all. What are you thinking about? What happened after the ball? When you kissed me? Let's not talk about that. I can understand for all this nobody to get excited about. But this might work out very well. 
Isn't he that fellow when you get to know him? The marriage bans can be published and the whole thing completed within a week. And during that time, of course, you can stay here. Then I accept. Monsieur, the car is waiting to take you to the station. I'm coming. You're leaving? Why, yes. Where are you going? To Geneva, of course. waiting for you in the conference room. Oh. Tell them... Tell them I'm sorry, but I must go back to Paris immediately. Hello, Jean. What can I do for you, sir? Who the... Who are you? I'm the butler. Who's butler? Monsieur's butler. Monsieur who? Monsieur Pierre Deroche. Ah. Oh. You are Monsieur Pierre Desroches' butler? Yes, sir. That I am. Is Monsieur Pierre Desroches at home? No, sir. Monsieur Pierre Desroches is in Geneva. Ah, and he probably won't be home until the end of the week. What is it I hear? Those monsieur are two friends of the boss. A gentleman and a lady. Mm-hmm. And could I speak to these friends of your boss? I'll see if they are in, sir. Whom shall I announce, sir? Monsieur Pierre Desroches. The boss. Yes, sir. Oh, I beg your pardon, boss. Welcome home, sir. Would you mind getting my bags in the deck? Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Right away, sir. Come in, please, sir. Oh. I'm not intruding. Oh, how perfectly silly. Of course not. <clears throat> oh. Won't you uh, sit down? You are very kind. Pierre! Pierre! Hello, good old Pierre. How come you're back so soon? Am I disturbing you too? 
Huh? Oh, not at all, not at all. <laughs> Still does it, any idea. Got some sherry. No, thanks. Well, who would have thought it? What conduct, what ease, what savoir faire. A real little woman of the world, eh? You must have given her some lessons. Oh, yes, I did, I did. Mm. I thought as much. Who you mean? Tell us about your trip. What are they doing in Geneva? Well, for one thing, they are not showing their legs the way they are in Paris this year. Thank you so much for telling me. Oh, by the way, uh, who is the new butler? Oh, he's a schoolmate of mine. A schoolmate? From that girls' boarding school in Geneva, no doubt. Has he any identification papers? Oh, no, but I, I can answer for him. He's so anxious to start a new life. A new life? He too? Certainly looks as if my house had turned into a home for reformed characters. Oh, thanks, old man. Thanks a lot. Well. You are leaving? Yes, I'm going to get dressed, if you don't mind. You know, like they do in Geneva. Ah, uh, she's enchanting. Mind you, that girl has brains as well as beauty. You show some of those snapshots I took of her with your camera. Not bad for an amateur, eh? Oh, very well, it's your loss. Hmm. Well, in that case, you better get down to serious business. That money by any chance? Yes, this time, not for me. We realize, of course, I had to buy her something decent to wear. A bathing suit? Sun suit. <laughs> Naturally, one or two other little things. I don't expect a man like me to marry a woman in rags. <laughs> here, here are the bills. Frank, I don't get it. Was it really necessary to buy all this for a girl you'll see for five minutes? At a marriage ceremony? The fact is, I'm beginning to wonder if our marriage really will be one in uh, name only. You know, I firmly believe that the root of all my past troubles has been sheer loneliness. If I could feel someone by my side, always ready to advise, to sympathize, to feel the tender touch of a feminine hand. You, you are joking, of course. Oh, not at all. Oh, I'll let it I get on like a house of fire. And you see the way she snaps up any little hints I happen to drop. Surely you've noticed a change in her deportment. <laughs> Not to mention her grammar. Now look, Roland. Just because a girl catches on quickly and... and has beautiful legs, that's not enough to build a permanent marriage on. Do you mean to say that charm and grace and femininity aren't important? Yes, they are. But what do you know about her? Her family, uh, oh, we'll go to the colonies. Anybody who plays bridge is accepted. I'll teach her the strong note trump. And what will you live on? Your money first. You won't go very far. Tahiti? You can live on seafood, coconuts, bananas. Ah, those South Seas are simply enchanting. Canoes, gardens of flowers, lovely native songs, and at night, bridge.
mother? Male or female? Why should you care? Look, Eve, you're not playing fair with me. Don't be a fool. I just don't want you to get mixed up in something that's none of your business. Listen, are we pals, yes or no? Of course we are. You know that. But I'm also the sort of servant you approve of. Discreet? Look for yourself. Are you afraid, Pierre? Of course I'm not afraid. But uh, it's not exactly comfortable when your husband knows I had your picture in my watch. But he doesn't know. When his jealousy is terrible. And he has never been sweeter and more considered than he is right now. Not so loud, I beg of you. Is there someone else in the house? Mm. No. But the servants might hear. Or your secretary? What will you think of next? First of all, she only comes on Wednesday. Mm. Pretty. Hideous. Thick glasses and pigeon toad. What do you think of this one for the wedding tomorrow? Oh, I beg your pardon. My, what a pleasant surprise. And how is His Excellency? Very well, I hope. Fine. And how is your uncle? Fine, fine. I'm afraid I've neglected him a little of late. And now, if you'll excuse me, the dressmaker's waiting. Her spitting, you know, such a deadly bore. See you soon, I hope. Let me explain Oh, it's to you. quite clear. I understand perfectly. No. No, it isn't clear at all. You are completely mistaken. Oh, stop lying and give me back my picture. Now I understand why you invented that silly story which didn't make sense. This girl means nothing to me. You'll soon be convinced. Of course not. You're just buying her pretty clothes because you are sorry for her. Here, I want my picture back. I already told you your husband took it. Look for yourself. I got enough trouble. Females, females, always under your feet or in your hair. Nothing but trouble. I've got half a mind to trade you in for a male dog. Get away. Get away. Go on. Go on. I think it you, but I don't really mean it. What shall I do about it? Yeah. Here, yeah, where are you? Oh, there you are. Listen, old man, I've come up from the courthouse. Everything is in order. The bands are published. I must say, it gave me quite a kick to see my name right alongside our list. Oh, by the way, that reminds me, you owe me 300 francs to cover the cost of the license. Now, here's the itemized account. Let's not be hasty. Well, oh, no, let's only pay it once. You see, these papers are essential to the marriage, and the big days tomorrow, don't forget. There's not going to be any marriage. No, there's not. There... What are you talking about? I refuse to be a party to this farce. 
It's rather a sudden switch, isn't it? Sudden. For the last two nights, I haven't slept a wink. Oh. Why? Because... Because she's on my mind constantly. So on account of her, I rushed back from Geneva. When she's around, I'm seized with a terrible desire to take her in my arms. And all I do is to be rude and unkind to her. The whole thing is insane. But I can't fight against it any longer. You're right, Roland. Career, social position. What do they matter compared to love? Who's talking now? Oh, come on, man. Pull yourself together. It's quite different with me. I could marry Arlette because I blotted my social copybook ages ago. You'd be amazed at the number of houses I'm not invited to. But you, you have a brilliant future, a real career. For you to marry Arlette is out of the question, definitely out. And as for anything else, well, believe me, Pierre, this is her one chance to lead an honest life. Don't take it away from her. And don't make a fool of yourself either. Look at me. It was through a series of just such brainstorms that I landed where I am now, with a ticket to Tahiti. One, mark you. She didn't want to come. I asked her, she turned me down. It's up to you, Pierre. Let her go. All right. All right, all right, go and marry her. And do it quickly, as quickly as possible. Article 212. Husband and wife owe one another mutual fidelity, mutual sympathy, and mutual assistance. Article 213. The husband, as head of the family, has a right to designate the place of mutual residence. The wife is obligated to live there with him, and the husband, in turn, to receive her. Will uh, the bride and groom please rise? Monsieur Roland Latour, do you take uh, for your wife, uh, Mademoiselle Arlette Lafon, present here? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, yes, I do. Mademoiselle Arlette Lafon, do you take uh, as your husband, uh, Monsieur Roland Latour, present here? Excuse me. Would you please read Article 213 again? The husband, head of the family, has the right to designate uh, the place of mutual residence. The wife is obligated uh, to live with him there, and uh, the husband, in turn, to receive her. Oh. You mustn't say, oh, say, say yes. I know. Mademoiselle Arlette Lafon. Do you take as your husband, Monsieur Roland Latour, present here? Uh, no. Excuse us, Your Honor. My, my fiance is a little upset. We'll, uh, we'll be back another day. I hope. Just a moment, then. Oh, pardon me, mademoiselle. I congratulate you. For 30 years now, I have had a monotonous job. I've been marrying couple after couple. I ask them all the same questions, and they all give me the same answers. And just when I felt bored to death, you come along and have the courage to say no. Bravo, mademoiselle. Believe me, it is much better for a marriage not to come over at all than for it to end in divorce. Bravo. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yana. Why are you dressed like that? If you should ever think of me. I want you to think of me like this. I will. That first dance meant so much to me. One last dance. I'm already late. But it will be a memory to put away with the first one. Please. I think it would be better not to. Jim. Yeah. 
you don't know how much it would mean to me. I'd rather not. Just one last dance. I'll get my things together. Giving up? Mm hmm? If I thought it was any use, I'd never give up. But if things are. But if things are. It's a good thing you gave up being a crook. There was no future in it for you. You haven't enough insight, enough observation, enough understanding of human nature, enough, uh, je ne sais quoi. To be quite frank, you're not bright enough. Look, why does a man pay back and forth like this for hours? To exercise? No. Another question. Why does a man stand in front of a mirror like this, staring like this, to admire himself, to get a glimpse of his necktie? No. Still another question. Why does a man refuse to dance with a pretty girl? Is it such a big thing? No, it's nothing, unless, unless he's in love. Then a dance is a big thing. Then he has to fight it, because it can lead to, believe me. Well, all right, all right, then why shouldn't it lead? Why should he have to fight it? If he loves me, why doesn't he just, just say so? It would be so easy, so nice. Because, my poor child, it's not true that a man in love forgets everything. Seventy-five percent fine. For a certain emotional type like me, even eighty. But never everything. And with what is left over, he thinks. Now the boss. Perhaps he's thinking of the ten years he studied to be a diplomat. Even to marry you, it's not so easy to toss those ten years out of the window. Well, why should he have to toss him out of the window? Listen, for example, he's on his way to the embassy reception. Could he take you with him? And why not? Why should he be ashamed of me? Oh, he should maybe be proud of you. He should maybe present you to the ambassador like this. Do uh, you remember this little girl, Your Excellency? She still watches. Yeah? You mean, I'm not good enough, maybe, hmm? Then an ambassador who gets somebody to steal for him, or his wife who, who does love him, or the baron who's an accomplice to a crime just to keep his own bread buttered. They think I'm not good enough to associate with them, huh? Well, I'll just show Monsieur Pierre de Roche that I can handle the whole mess of them and make them like it. Is. Are you sure? You're very sure that Pierre loves me? I swear it. I swear it on the head of my father. she was going? No, sir. But she asked where you were going. Well, did you tell her? Yes, sir. I told her you were going to the, to the embassy reception. Good. Sir, 
Yes, sir. Shall I put those in water? Oh. principle that must guide our negotiations is that, uh, in fact, the situation must be handled with great delicacy. Simply say, ooh. My dear, I had no reason to say ooh. I simply said, oh. Oh. Pardon, Baron. Your niece, Excellency. Uncle? <laughs> oh, hello, Uncle. Oh, Your Excellency. This is a pleasure, Mademoiselle. You didn't tell me your charming niece was coming. Come and sit with me, my dear. All right, niece. He's introducing her as my niece. Well, isn't she? Naturally. Now, explain to me, my dear, why you disappeared so early from the embassy ball the other night. Oh, uh, <laughs> well, uh, my uncle, the Baron, seemed to think that since it was my first ball, I shouldn't stay too late. <laughs> He's an old foggy. <laughs> Even now, he's beginning to get that you better go home early look. <laughs> it isn't late, is it? No, of course not. Besides, you only just arrived. Why, what a lovely watch. Yeah. <laughs> isn't that beautiful? Watches are my weakness. Oh. <laughs> Mine too. Yeah, dear. Mademoiselle, may I have the pleasure? My pleasure. Signority. Thank you. The trouble with seniority is that it's always wasted on old men. <laughs> Darling? Since you're so anxious to dance, I'll accommodate you. Think of something. Come on, think, think, think. I am your excellency. I am. Oh, well, come on. You've made a conquest. The minister seems to find you irresistible. 
Ridiculous, isn't it? Mm, he's a man of excellent taste. Spare me the sarcasm. I meant. You spare me your charm. Arlette, I was very happy to find you here. <laughs> Did you come to the ball to quarrel with me? You wanted to dance, at least enjoy it. Very generous of you. Did you notice the ambassador and his wife? How nicely they dance? How she smiles at him? I wonder how charmingly they would smile at me if you hadn't taken that picture out of my watch. So you finally figured it out. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I must say, it took you a long time. Personally, I don't think you have much future in the diplomatic corps. No? Do you have enough insight, enough uh, understanding of human nature, enough just to quoi? I know you are right, completely right. It worries me. I need someone to help me. Someone clever with a... Uh, Je ne sais quoi that I like. Someone like a secretary? No, not exactly. Someone more like your wife. I don't suppose... I don't suppose you'd be interested. Well, it doesn't sound like much of a future. What we're getting you out of scrapes with women and... Recovering all the luggage that you lose, being gracious to a lot of high-class crooks like the ambassador. No time at all, you probably have me stealing watches for you, too. No, it, it doesn't sound very appealing. I don't even know why I, I would consider it. No. Oh, no, I... Well, why should I? Because a young girl's first ball is a very important event, which she should remember all her life. Because I want no one else in your thoughts, in your memories. Because I love you. You must find a solution. A solution, that's it. You have one? No. Oh, of course not. I have. Turn your lie into a reality. A doctor. Make a mighty? Well, what do you want? An ugly black scandal? Or a lovely young niece?